What have you been waiting for? Winning the lottery? Stranger Things Season 5? I've been waiting for custom CSS inside of Elemental version 4 and finally beta version 3.33 delivers. I've been talking about the need for us to have custom CSS for a while and I did a video on how you could implement it but I am so glad that we're finally getting it. Now version 3.33 does have a few other things, variable manager, blend mode, but I am really keen to explore the custom CSS. So let me just quickly reiterate, we now have a variable manager for us to handle complex design systems. We're also told about adding in some depth with darkening and things with regards to the blend mode. I'm not overly bothered by that, but it's the whole thing about custom CSS. So I'm gonna jump into my test website that's already got version four. Make sure it's a test dummy website or staging. Don't try this out, especially betas on a live production website. So here we go. I've got the beta version enabled. If you go over to Elemental, go to Tools version, you can say enable beta. So I've got beta for Elemental, Elemental Pro. Let's now jump into an actual page. You're actually going to notice a few other things have changed as well. Do you remember the cog we used to have over there for page settings? It's now been moved over here. That's your page settings. At first, I was a little bit unsure. Where is it? Where's the cog? But that's where it is. So if you click that, this is where you could hide your title, go and select your layout elemental canvas because I don't want to see the header footer. What we also have re-enabled is the history. So many people were unhappy with the fact that we had to go and click the E and then you would have your history. Well, now you've got it there. But if you now go to the E, things that were present over here are now inside the E. So things like notes, theme builder, site settings, where you go for your global color, your global font, custom CSS. I'm going to drop in a heading. We are using a version four element as well, by the way. Don't forget, if we go and use a version three heading, if you click on it, you go to the advanced tab, you go down to custom CSS. That is what we were missing in the version four. Because before, when you went to the style tab, we did not have it. You could go into style, you could give it a class name, or you could give it an ID, but we were missing that custom CSS pane. And if you then had to go into site settings or your theme customizer to do all of your CSS, that can get quite messy when you just want to add CSS to one particular element. So staying on this heading, we go over to style and now we've got custom CSS. And basically it's there. Now I've zoomed in just to show you that it already comes pre-built with syntax like elemental uh, element.style curly bracket open, curly bracket end. So if I type color and I've typed in FF0050 to get my pinkish neonish color and that has now changed. We did not have that facility before. But what if prior to here, I actually wanted to only apply this for a particular class? Because this is something I touched on in a previous video. Now I'm going to test this out a bit further. I've removed the code and what I'm going to do instead is create a new one with a class name. So I'm just going to create a class called blue. And then over here, I'm going to put in my color with a blue color. And that's now applied it. And I drop in, say, a paragraph and I go to style and I pick blue. That changes blue. I'm going to drop in a Flexbox container from version four, go to the custom CSS. And again, I can add some styles. This is acting like a wrapper for the container. So I can't add anything before that curly bracket. I can't overwrite the element dot style, but I could do dot blue because I'm now referring to the class I've used for the heading and the paragraph there. So inside of that wrapper element style, I'm doing dot blue font size, 50 pixel, close the bracket. I've changed it to apply to H1. So inside of this flex container, that's got that code. Let's go and add in a heading. We'll start with the version free one. Okay. I'm going to make it be a H1 and I'm going to give it the class name of blue. And that will now be 60 pixel. In fact, let's just call it V3. But if I drop in the version 4 global element and I select H1, it still has not changed, but that's because we haven't set the style. However, if I go and select blue, that's not gone 60 pixel. And if I go and click on the flex container where we went and added that code locally, if I get rid of the H1, right, now it makes the V4 blue or bigger, sorry, adopts the color and all of that, but it's missing that font size. And what I think you need to do, and I'm now referring back to when I did a version three and a version four 
like video where you could ensure you had CSS that worked for both. Now I've made the V3 and the V4 heading inside of it all be Montserrat. Now if I go over to the flex container, remember this is the version 4 flex container and I go down to where we have the CSS, this is local and I drop this code in, you notice the V3 and V4 have all changed. This is a bit of code where I'm saying, if you've got the class name, so the V3 in the advanced tab, it's got the CSS class name for blue. If we go to this V4, it's actually got the blue as a class over there, but inside of the flex container, this does take a bit of getting used to. And I have explained this in previous tutorials and I probably need to do a reminder of this, is blue. This bit here, this bit all the way there, that's going to touch your version 3 elements if they've got that class name. If they've got a version 4 class applied, then that will now touch the e-heading, the paragraph base and the button base to be 16. If I was to go and change this to be 600, you can see what's happening on screen now. Everything is overlapping. But if I take this particular code, remember the v4's got the element.style wrapper going on there. Let's just hit publish for a moment. And we go over to the version three flex container. This is a version three flex container. This was a version four. This currently has the blue class. That's got the blue class. This over here, I don't, yeah, I've added in the blue class, but there's no color change because the color change only applies to the class that was done. If, however, we were to go into the version three container now and go to custom CSS and I drop in that CSS code like this, can you now see that the, the version 3 and the version 4 have changed? And if I wanted to, if I had gone in and done color FF0050, you can see they've all changed now and it's applied it across the board. So you can use like some custom CSS to touch version 3 and version 4. Just bear in mind though that if you are using the version 4, it is going to wrap it inside of the element.style. You know, so you got to play around with it. And I feel like this is still something I need to get my head around. And once I do, I'll put across a much better tutorial on how to explain this. But from the get go beta 3.33, we get that. We are told about the fact you can do some better blending and management of your variables. But for now, I'm taking interest in the custom CSS. And of course, don't forget your top bars changed as well. So this is a first look at Elemental Beta 3.33 the custom CSS. I definitely need to play with this a bit more. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.